Sriram Jairam Jai Jai Ram Sriram Jairam Jai Jai Ram Sriram Jairam Jai Jai Ram Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Sri Ram Jai Jai Ram Raja Ram Patita Pavan Sita Ram Patita Pavanasita Ragu Patir Hagava Raja Ram Patita Pavanasita Ram Patita Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Bolo Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Sri Ram Jayam, 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 I Sitaram, Jayalakshman Hanuman, Jayasitaram, Jayalakshman Hanuman, Jayasitaram, Jayalakshman Hanuman, Jayasitaram, Jayalakshman Hanuman, Bolo, bolo, nice and loud. I can't hear you. Jaya Sita Ram, Jaya Lakshman Hanuman. Jaya Sita Ram, Jaya Lakshman Hanuman. Hey. Ho. Sri Ram, Jaya Ram. Jai Sita Ram, Jai Lakshman Hanuman, Sita Ram, Jai Lakshman Hanuman. Sita Ram Jaya Lakshman Jaya Sita Ram Jaya Lakshman Hanuman Sita Ram Jaya Lakshman Hanuman Sita 
Hari Bha, Hari Bha, Hari Bha, Hari Bha, Hari Bha, Hari Bha, and Hittai Gora Hari Bha, Hari Bha, Hari Bha, Hari Bha. Jai Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Thum 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 He's much faster than that. I'm, I'm too slow. <laughs> Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ji Ki Jai So this is the beginning of three days of Ramkata at least in the evening time, and on Wednesday, the actual celebration day of the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Ramadi Murti Shukalani Amena Tishtan Nannavatara Akara Bhuvane Shikinchu Krishna Swayam Samabhavat Paramam Paman Yo Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami out of all the incarnations of the Supreme Personality, see Krishna. Ramadi Murti Shukala. Ramad, the form of Sri Ram, is very prominent. He is Kala. He manifested himself in a particular way as a human being at approximately two million years ago in the Treta Yuga. Mm -hmm. The pastimes of Ram are described in one great scripture which is known throughout all the Asian world, not just in India, but through all Asian countries as the Ramayan. And they all have their versions of the Ramayan, that great powerful Kshatriya king who beat back the demons known as Ravana and all of his Rakshasya followers. Ram is the personification of righteousness. And righteousness is those qualities that are completely, perfectly in line with all religious principles. Krishna is different. Krishna followed religious principles when he wanted to, and when he didn't want to, he didn't. <laughs> That's Krishna. <laughs> But Krishna can do that because he's the author of religious principles, so whatever he does is religious principles. But Ram was different. Ram is righteous in being a Kshatriya king. Kshatriyas are known to have many wives. He only had one. He was known as Ekapatni. Patni means wife. He only had one wife, Sita Devi. He is also known for the perfect king the perfect ruler, the principle of leadership in its best character and quality. The Ramayan teaches so many powerful lessons that we can learn. Practically on every page of the Ramayan there are pastimes which we can study and see so many personal characteristics and qualities that we may adopt or messages that are important in our practice of spiritual life. The Ramayan is uh, filled and of course the author of the Ramayan, the original Ramayan is Valmiki Muni. Valmiki Muni was a hunter who was known as a very vicious hunter. He lived on just in the age of Satya Yuga. But he met one great personality, Narada Muni. Upon meeting Narada Muni, he changed and became a great devotee. After becoming a great devotee and chanting the names of Ram, he was petitioned by Lord Brahma to write the story of the life of Sri Ram and write it down. And he did in 24,000 verses. He wrote the Ramayan. <laughs> and so there are, of course, there is one Ramayan, but some of the versions have more or less of the pastimes. 
But Valmiki Muni is the most authorized one. Valmiki Muni, uh, they say, it reappeared in this age as Tulsi does to again write the Ramayan. Now, Tulsi does his Ramayan is a little bit different. It's more of a poetic expression of the activities. And Tulsi Das's Ramayan is not meant for generally for Vaishnavas because there are principles that are mentioned that are um, somewhat different than Vaishnava uh, Siddhanta. In other words, he does include a lot of impersonal principles in his Ramayan. Uh, so he is, we, we follow Valmiki's. And for us, in the Krishna Conscious Society, we have the version by um, Krishna Dharma Prabhu from London. He wrote a very concise one volume, about 400 pages on the Ramayan, which is really covers the essential topics and pastimes of the Lord. There's another version that is coming out in, in different khandas because the Ramayan is seven khandas long, and this one devotee, Subhavi Las Prabhu, has done five of the seven khandas. And his Ramayan is interesting because he's combined uh, Valmiki's Muni's Ramayan with another person named Kambi. Kambi also wrote a Ramayan. Kambi is from the Sri Sampradaya. And his Ramayan was authorized by Lord Nishringadev personally. <laughs> Lord Nurishigadev gave his approval that this Ramayan is authorized. That's a wonderful story. Um, and that, and then there's another nice series of volumes put out by one devotee in Mayapur named Vidvan Goranga. Uh, Vidvan Goranga has also done the Ramayan in in volumes, beautiful green cover books that you can also get. So these are the versions that are more accessible and meant for the devotees in our ISKCON movement like that. Um, many of the Ramayans are in the original Sanskrit, so they're hard to really read <laughs> for us. Uh, the history of the Ramayan is interesting. I'll go a little bit back just to be give, give a little bit of the, the history. Um, there was one very powerful king named Dasarat. Dasa Rata. Dasa means ten and Rat means chariot. So he, when he used to fight on the battlefield, it would seem like he would have ten chariots coming at you at once. That's where he got the name. He was such a powerful Kshatri and undefeated in battle. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, some people say he had three wives, and that is three principal wives but he actually had 350 wives. <laughs> That's mentioned in Kumbi's Ramayan. And how did he get 350 wives? They're not even mentioned in the main Ramayan. And uh, it's interesting because Parasaram was on the planet at the same time. <laughs> and Parasaram was going around finding these Kshatriya kings who were very proud, and he was killing them. He killed 21 generations of Kshatriya kings simply by chopping them to pieces <laughs> with his axe. <laughs> when any news that Parasaram was coming into the vicinity of Ayodhya, which was the kingdom ruled by Dasarat, Dasarat would get the message that uh, Parasaram is in the area and he's coming. But Parasaram made it a rule that he would not kill any king who was getting married. So therefore, Dasarat made sure every time Parasaram was coming, he'd get married. So that's how he got 350 wives. They say your wife is your best protector. Huh? <laughs> that's mentioned in Kumbi's Narayan. So Dasarat, although he had so many queens, three principal queens, none of them were able to give him a child. In fact, he did have one child by his principal queen, Koshalya, and that was a girl named Shanta. And Shanta, because he was a king and he was getting old, he was always thinking, 
who will be the heir to the throne after I depart. So for a Kshatriya not to have a son, it's like probably considered the being that it's a failure. He's a failure. And he was thinking, what can I do? But he could never have a son. He took his daughter. He had a good friend who was a king of another kingdom named Romapad. And Romapad didn't have any children either. And so Dasrat, for his friendliness towards his friend Romapad, he gave him his daughter Shanta to live in his kingdom. So therefore, he, he the one child he had, which was a girl, he gave away to Romapad to take care of. Now, after some time, there was a drought in Romapad's kingdom, and it hadn't rained for months and months and months. It was a catastrophe. The crops were burning up. Sacrifices could not be performed. Nothing was working. Everybody tried to do whatever they can to bring about rain, but rain was not coming. Mm. Rain is necessary to nourish the soil, the trees, the plants. Uh, there's many benefits coming from rain, but no rain. In, in that area of that kingdom, in the forest, there was one person, his name was Prabhanda. Prabhanda had a son. His son was quite unusual. He was different. He was born of half man and half animal. And he had horns coming out of his head, like that. But he was a boy. And Prabhanda uh, named his son Rishishringa. <laughs> And Rishishringa was living in the forest under the care of his father. And his father kept him very, very, uh, what we say, restricted. He wouldn't let him leave the hermitage. He always, and he took care of his son. If anything his son needed, he would get it himself. And his son was growing up. He was a young man now. And he had never left the hermitage his whole life. And his father would never let anyone come into the hermitage except great sages. So he never saw anyone except great sages. So, um, Romapad was thinking, I have to do something. So his minister, I think his minister's name was, hmm, can't think of his name. But he said, actually, you know, there's a solution to this drought. There's a great sage. He lives in the forest. His name is Rishishringa. You have to bring him here and marry him to your daughter Shanta. And together they can perform a sacrifice. And by the power of Rishishringa, you will have rain. Hmm. So Romapad was thinking, yes, but how to do that? He knew the situation with Rishishringa. So he decided to make a plan. So he got these three beautiful young girls <laughs> and he dressed them up very nicely with garlands and nice scents and perfumes and they looked so very attractive. And then he gave them baskets full of nice sweets and various kinds of sweet foods and fruits and told them to go find Rishishringa in the forest. So they were careful because they knew the father was always guarding them. So they waited to Prabhanda was went away to get some, collect some forest roots and and leaves. So then they came, and then they saw Rishishringa there. And Rishishringa saw these three uh, ladies, but he never saw a girl in his life. So he didn't know he didn't know what girls were. <laughs> It's good brahmachari program. <laughs> and, so, and he was thinking, these girls are a little unusual. They, had, they look a little bit, their shapes are a little different than most sages. <laughs> they must be different kinds of sages. <laughs> no, he wasn't. But then he, he was kind of thinking, oh. And then they start speaking to him. And then, oh boy, these sages have such sweet voices. <laughs> And they were speaking so nicely and so lovingly and offering him sweets and so many nice 
tasty foods. And he was thinking, this is nice, but I, I feel different now. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm getting this strange feeling. I don't know what it is, but I like it. <laughs> so these girls really charmed him. And then they didn't, they didn't stay so long. And then they left. When they left, Rishi Sringa's mind was completely changed and he became attached. And he thought, oh, these sages are really nice. <laughs> I have to find them. So he took the opportunity to leave. And then, of course, he met, they were hiding in the forest and they met him. And they took him to the kingdom of Romapad. And then Romapad arranged for him to get married to his daughter Shanta. And then they performed the sacrifice there, and rain came. This was the power of Rishishringa. If one is a strict brahmachari, even up to the time of marriage, one, can, one becomes very, very powerful. And so he had that power, and after performing the sacrifice, Indra gave his mercy in the form of rain. Dasarat was wondering, what am I going to do? I'm going to get old. Finally, his, his minister, Vashishta, said to Dasarat, you know, you gave your daughter Shanta to Romapad, and he married him to Rishasringa. You have to bring both of them here and perform this sacrifice, sacrifice called pre, Supreshti. It's, I think it's called Supreshti, yeah. It's a particular type of sacrifice, and only Rishasringa can do it. Only he can do it. And if he, when he does it, you will have a son. Oh, Dasarath is excited. He tells Rombapad. Rombapad says, yes. And he, he, Rishishringa and his wife Shanta come to the kingdom. And then there's a grand ceremony performed. And Rishishringa starts to perform the sacrifice. And it's an ugly hotra with fire, yagyas, and mantras and everything. And then uh, at one point, out of the fire comes this big, huge, black personality. And he's shining, although he's black, he's shining. And he has a pot in his hand that is made of gold. And out of the fire, he brings this pot and he gives it to Dasarat. And then he disappears back into the fire, a perfect fire sacrifice. And then Vashishta said, yes, now you should take this, it was called Havashyana. It's a kind of sweet rice that comes by way of performing this type of sacrifice. It's a little different than sweet rice, but it's essentially the same. And you have to give it to your three principal queens. So what he did is he gave half to Goshalya, and he gave half to Kaikei, and then he took a portion of Kaikei's and portion of of um, Goshalya's, and divided that again, and gave those two portions to his other queen, Sumitra. So he had three queens: Goshalya, Sumitra, Kaikei. And later on, they all became pregnant. And four sons came out of the three wives. From Koshyaya came Ram, from Sumitra came Lakshman and Satrugna, and from Kaikeya, not, uh, from Kaikeya came Bart. <laughs> and these were the four brothers. They were incarnations of the Chaturvyuha, Vasudev, Sankarsana, Aniruddha, and Prambhuna. And some say they are also the four manifestations of the four symbols of, of Vishnu, the club, the disc, the lotus flower, and the kanch, <laughs> these four. And they paired off in brothers, and Bharat and Satrugna became good friends, and Ram and Lakshman became good friends, and they grew up as children playing very nicely. Um, when Ram was about 16 years old, one great sage visited. His name was Vishramita Muni. 
Now, Vishra, Vishramita Muni was formerly a great Kshatriya, powerful Kshatriya, ruling with many kings and many armies. But he had an encounter with Vashishta, and Vashishta defeated him. <laughs> Vashishta was a Brahmin, and, Shat, and uh, Vishramita was a Kshatriya. And then, being defeated, he understood that Brahma Tejas is more, power, more is greater than Kshatriya Tejas. So he decided to convert himself from a Kshatriya to a Brahmin. So he performed austerities for a thousand years and became a very powerful sage. He was living in the forest with many other sages, and they were regularly performing sacrifices. But there were some problems. There was these two demons who were harassing the sacrifice. Every time they would get ready for the final part of the sacrifice to complete, these demons would come and throw all kinds of nasty substances and just defile the whole sacrifice. Well, this was happening regular. So Vishwamitta Muni came to the kingdom of Dasarat and said, he came, and then Dasarat welcomed him. It was a beautiful welcome, and it's this really a long exchange that goes on between the two of them in the welcoming part. And of course, uh, Dasarat was very happy to welcome this great sage. It's, it's the duty of the Kshatriyas to honor the Brahmins like that, and the duty of the Brahmins to assist the Kshatriyas in how to rule the kingdom. That is the perfect order. This is the, this is the Vanashram order. The Brahmins give advice. The Brahmins give counsel. They give knowledge. They give direction. They accept charity. They also give in charity. Uh, the Kshatriyas, they rule. They are, they are fighters. They are protectors. And they take advice from the Brahmins. The, the Vaishyas, they do all kinds of mercantile work. They know all about finances. And they also take care of the animals and take care of all the agriculture that's needed. And the sutras, their job is simply to assist the other three varnas in doing their services like that. So that's the, that is the varna part of the Vanashram system. So Vishwamitta Muni came, and then Dasarat finally asked him, uh, O oh, great sage, I'm sure, I'm sure you have come for some reason. Please tell us, we are at your service. My dear King Dasarat. Yes, and he explained the situation. In the forest, we, we cannot perform our sacrifices. There are two demons, Maricha and Subahu. They are simply destroying our sacrifices every time. I could kill both of them, I have the power, but because I'm a Brahmin, it's not the duty of the Brahmin to do, do this type of work. But therefore, I'm coming for your aid. You have two sons, Lakshman and Ram. They are qualified. I'm asking for their services. When Dasarat heard that, ooh, he was shocked. These boys are only 16 years old. They have never been in combat before. You're asking me to give them to you to fight against these two powerful demons? I will come with my own armies and I will lead the armies myself and I will do it. Vishwamitra Muni said, no. I come for Ram and Lakshman. And so Dasarat was really in a quandary. He didn't know what to do. He was confused. But then he understood you cannot refuse a Brahmin. If you refuse a Brahmin, that is an offense. And so, reluctantly, he gave his two sons. And Brahmin and Lakshman immediately came out with their bows and arrows and stood next to Vishwamita. And they were off. And then, of course, they were there waiting. And then when the demons came again, Ram went, <coughs> that was the end of Subahu. Finished. The other one, <laughs> and Maricha, he got hit so hard with the arrow, it knocked him 800 miles into the ocean. Didn't kill him, but he got knocked a long way. <laughs> uh, 
And then, of course, then Vishwamitra Muni was very, very happy. <laughs> and so that was the first encounter that they, uh, those two demons. Of course, Maricha reappears again and later on in, that, in this particular Leela. And then he gets a chance to get killed by Ram again. Or at least he gets killed this time. <laughs> And that's a nice story. So, yeah. So there's a lot of killing of demons. <laughs> we like when demons get killed. Jai! Kill some more! <laughs> Devotees are nonviolent. <laughs> but when demons get killed, everybody becomes happy. A demon is a person who gives trouble to others. That's all. That's their business. Their business is just to trouble others. That's all. That's what a demon means. Whatever they do, they're always giving trouble to others. That's that's their program. And so Prabhupada said, the world is filling up with demons, <laughs> giving trouble to others, and that's their program. They'll do it in so many different ways. So uh, after that, then... Um, Uh, Vishramita Muni says, come on, Lakshman and Ram, I want to take you to this one kingdom of Janaka. I think we can do some seva there. So they, they became very dutiful bound to Vishramita, and he was very happy to be with these two boys. And so they were on their way to M Mithila. Mithila is the kingdom of Janaka. Janaka is the father of Sita. Her, her name also is Janaki. We, Janaki also is another name for Sita, means the daughter of Janaka. So, um, in that kingdom, Janaka, he was a great king, very powerful, many ministers, glorious leader. He's actually one of the Mahajans, you know, we see Brahma. Narada, Shiva, Prahlad, Janaka, Bhishma, Bali, who else? The four Kumaras, like that. These are all the Mahajans. So Janaka is one of them. He teaches eternal religious principles. So one day when Janaka was plowing the field, he decided to do some plowing himself. He was plowing the field with a, a plow. His plow hit a box and it stopped. And then he dug a little deeper, picked up the box, it was a beautiful box, came right out of the ground. He opened the box up, and inside it was a little baby girl. <laughs> and that's how Sita appeared on the planet. She came in that way. So he was amazed, he took this little girl home and raised her as his own daughter, like that. Um, there was a big fight in the heavenly planets. And I, actually, there was a fight that was about to happen between Shiva and the demigods. The, somebody, the demigods had done something to Shiva, and Shiva became very angry. So he was ready to fight with them. <laughs> you know, when you fight with Shiva, you lose. <laughs> the only one who can beat Shiva is Krishna or Ram. Shiva is very powerful. And so the demigods realized that we can't fight against Shiva, you know. So they fell at his feet, apologized for all their mistakes, begged for forgiveness. And uh, Shiva was very happy. He's called Asutos. That means he's easily pleased and easily angered. Do you know people like that? You can They're pleased so easily, and then they get angry very easily. You know anybody like that? That's a Shiva quality. And so he was pleased, and he decided to give them a benediction. So he had a very powerful bow. So he gave that bow to the devas, to some of them. And that bow was so powerful, so they kept it. But then they were thinking, we should give this bow to Janaka. So one day, the, a few of the demigods came and bestowed the bow upon Janaka. Now this bow of Shiva was very heavy. 
In fact, no human being could pick it up. <laughs> it was completely heavy. So Janakim kept that bow in a very special place. He kept it under a glass case, and it was kept on a, a device that you could roll. But the only way you could roll it is you needed 300 men to push it. That's how, how heavy the... These are 300 strong men, not just, you know, weak guys. They had some strength. And so he kept that bow there in the very special place. One day, Sita was cleaning. And she was cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. She came to the place where the bow was. She opened up the lid and she picked up the bow with her hand and cleaned underneath and put it down. <laughs> when uh, Dasarad saw that, I mean, Janaka saw that, he was thinking, whoa, <laughs> 300 men can't even push it, and she's picking it up and cleaning. So he could understand his daughter was somebody very, very special. <laughs> So then he decided, well, it's a duty to the father to get the daughter married. So he decided to make, a, since he realized that she is a very special person, he set up a competition that anyone who could come and simply put a string on this bow of Lord Shiva, that person could be the husband of my daughter. So the news was out and kings came from all different places. And some of them they couldn't even look at the bow, some of them. <laughs> some of them tried to pick it up but couldn't even move it. They were so embarrassed. Even Ravana came. Ravana tried to pick it up and he couldn't pick it up. <laughs> and so the kings were really angry, so they decided to attack Janaka. And so Janaka called for the demigods to help him and there was a big fight and with the help of the demigods he beat back these kings. <laughs> and so uh, <clears throat> now who is going to marry Sita Devi? So then Vishwar meet him along with Sita, uh, with Ram and Lakshman come. So when they come the citizens are seeing, oh here comes Vishwar Mita Muni, so powerful. And he has these two beautiful boys with him. They're so attractive. We wonder who they are. They look very strong, but they're so young. So as they came, they were entering into the kingdom and they were welcomed very nicely. Finally, Janaka got the news that Vishwamitra Muni came. So he came out to welcome him and it was a nice exchange. And Vishwamitra Muni, after being welcomed nicely, said, yes, I have brought this boy here, Ram, he is the son of Dasarat, and uh, he has come to accept the challenge of stringing the bow. So Janaka thought, hmm, he looks like a nice prospect for my daughter. <laughs> and of course, Sita, when she saw him, she saw him from a distance. Her heart immediately became enchanted. And she was thinking, this I, I must have him for my husband. <laughs> this is a very sweet part. Ladies like this very part, part of the Ramayana. It's so nice. Tulsi Das tells it in poetry. It's so beautiful the way he tells it. It's poetic and it's so... I'm just speaking it. I don't really have any, you know, Shakti to tell it like Tulsi Das. But he tell, describes it so beautifully. And now there's a big celebration, and Ram will try to, uh, you know, string the bow. So then the 300 men, they roll out the bow, <laughs> put it in the center of the auditorium. Everybody's watching. Ram comes up. He stands there. His head is low. He's looking down. He looks up. He sees the bow. Shiva's bow, he offers his pranams. He takes one hand, puts it on the bow, and then all of a sudden he goes, choom, and lifts the bow over his head. Everyone goes, wow! Nobody's been able to move the bow. And then he takes the bow, takes the string, puts it on one end, puts it on the other end, 
pulls back the string and he pulls it back so far that the bow actually turns into a circle. And he's holding it like that. And then he lets the string go. Toom! And when he did, it shook the whole universe. And, you know, everybody thought, an earthquake. <laughs> the sound was so tumultuous that everything shook all over the world. And, uh, of course, Sita was so happy. <laughs> and then Janaka said, perfect, yes. So, and then the marriage was arranged. So now to contact Dasarat and let him know what had happened. So Janaka and his assembly of uh, ministers with some soldiers, they came and they traveled through three days and they finally came to the place of I Ayodhya. They were greeted nicely by, uh, and they were, these, these two kings, Janaka and, and Dasarat, were very close friends. They hadn't seen each other in years. So it was a wonderful reunion. They talked, and finally, Janaka said, your son has Ram. He has won the hand of my daughter, Janaki, and Sita. So we come for your blessings and permission for Ram to marry my daughter. Janaki and Dasarat was very happy, and so happy that he arranged so nice accommodations for all the soldiers. After they stayed for a few days, they went on when they were right back. And Janaka, then he, I'm sorry, then Dasarat, he led his entourage and they left Ayodhya to go to Mithila for the marriage ceremony. And Bart came, Satrugna came, and all of the principal people in Ayodhya, Ayodhya came. So it was a grand wedding. And then, uh, what was it? I think it was Vishwamita Muni, he said, you know, there are three other brothers. There is Lakshman, there is Satrugna, there is Bart. We should have a grand wedding with all four brothers. <laughs> so Janaka said, yes, actually I have a, my brother, his name is Kusajwaj. He has two daughters, Manavi and Shruti Kirti. They can be married to Bart and Satrugna. So Satrugna married Shruti Kirti, Bart ma married Madhavi, and Lakshman married the sister of Janaki. Her name was Irmila, Irmila. Mm -hmm. So a grand wedding with all four brothers and, f and their four queens got married, and it was a great festival. Like that. So now everybody's happy, and everyone, the marriage took place, and great celebration, very auspicious. Now Johnny, now uh, Dasarat wants to return to Ayodhya along with Ram and all the queens. So he's there with his minister, Vashista, and they're traveling. All of a sudden, when they start traveling, after a little while, Dasarat notices there's strange omens in the air. Birds are flying low and howling, and clouds are forming overhead. He turns to Vashishta. He says, Vashishta, what is happening? There is evil omens. Something bad is about to happen. Vashishta said, yes, that is true. But look here. There are some deer. They're crossing the stream here. This is a good sign. So something bad will happen, but we will be saved. Good to have a minister. <laughs> Who knows? So, yeah, so as they were walking, all of a sudden, things became very dark, and then clouds, and all of a sudden, this black person appeared, and he was fierce, he was big, he had a bow that was six meters tall, just his bow, and he was huge, and his eyes were burning red with fire. He looked, he stopped everyone, and he looked at Ram. He said, Ram, you broke Shiva's bow. You're going to have to fight me. It was Parasaram. <laughs> he 
he had come. And he said, but if you can take my bow, and this bow is the bow of Vishnu, it's more powerful than Shiva's bow, if you can shoot an arrow from this bow, then I am your servant. So here, take it. <laughs> Gave him the bow. Ram just picked up the bow, put an arrow. First he pointed it at Parasaram, <laughs> but then he pointed it away, pulled it back, boom! <laughs> and he fired that arrow, and it went all around the universe and came all the way back. And when he, again, he pulled back the bow. This time when he pulled back the bow, he pulled it back so hard the bow broke in three places and fell in three different areas of the world far away from where they were. Ram, he, he became a little bit fired up, you could say. <laughs> and uh, so he, and then when Paris Ram said, I can understand who you are. <laughs> I offer my obeisances to you. I am your servant. I've killed so many Kshatriyas because they're all rogues and dacoits and so proud of their, whatever they're proud of. <laughs> but you are, you must be Vishnu himself. So I offer my obeisances and he disappeared. <laughs> so everyone was scared because everyone was thinking, oh my God, you know, how's Ram going to face Parasaram, <laughs> you know? But Ram is the Supreme Lord and Parasaram is also the Lord, but he is a Shaktivesh avatar, his special incarnation of the Lord. And Ram is the full manifestation of, of Vishnu. So God was fighting with God. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> so then, of course, then they return back to the kingdom. And there are many, many stories that happen after that. And so stay tuned for part two. <laughs> when we will continue with Sri Ram Lila tomorrow night. <laughs> Is there any any by chance anyone would like to ask a question? <laughs> I know it's a very remote possibility, but still we're supposed to ask. <laughs> Or a comment. <laughs> so we narrated the coming of Sita, Ram, Lakshman, I mean Ram, and the three brothers. We narrated the story of Rishishringa, Dasarat's anguish of not having a son, the killing of the two demons, and the marriage of Sita and Ram. That was a quick overview. <laughs> okay, so. I'll tell you a little story. First, I'm going to ask you a question. And you must know the answer. <laughs> What was the name of Ra? I'm sorry. What was the name of Ravana's principal queen? Huh? Mandodari. Okay. Mandodari. She is considered to be a chaste lady, and she's glorified in the category of chaste ladies in the history of Vedic culture. Who knows the younger brother of Ravana? What was his name? Vibhishan. Vibhishan was, he was pious, although he was born in a Rakshasya family. One day, he was taking, he was taking, he was putting Ram's name all over the kingdom of Lanka. 
He was writing R-A-M-A, R-A-M-A. So Ravana, he saw that. What are you doing? Why do you write Rama's name everywhere in the kingdom? Yubhishan said, my brother, you don't understand. R-A stands for you, and M-A stands for your queen, Mandodari. So R-A-M-A, -A, I'm writing it all over. Oh, Ravana said, oh, very good, continue. Nice story. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you some questions. What was the name of the place where Lakshman cut off the nose of the sister of Ravana, and what was her name? What was Ravana's sister's name, and where did she get an, a face uplift? Who knows? Supanarka, Supanarka, yes. And where's the place? Nasik. Nasik. And what does Nasik mean? It means cut nose. <laughs> it's, 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 it's actually a city in India today, and it's just north of Bombay. And if you go there, you can see the place where that pastime took place. It's nice. We went, what year did I go? 2005, I think I was. Maybe, no, it was even before that. No, it was 2002. 2002, I went there. Okay, so, another question. What is another name for Hanuman? One Just one. Anjana Sutta. Perfect. Anjana is the, the, the mother of Hanuman, and Sutta means son. The son of Anjana is Anjana Sutta, and that is... Hanuman. What was name two of the different fathers that were actually considered to be the fathers of Hanuman? Certain there's three. He, he appears in different manifestations in different times. Sometimes he accepts different fathers. Hmm? Bhima? Bhima's his brother. That's his brother. Vayu. Hmm? Vayu. Vayu, that's one of his fathers. Yeah, he was the son of Vayu, the wind god. What's another one of his names that he appeared? The husband of Anjana. What was his, her, his name? Keshari Raj. He was the son of Keshari Raj. And one time he appeared as the son of Lord Shiva. And there's a connection between Hanuman and Lord Shiva also. Hmm. What does the word Hanuman mean? What is the actual... Yeah, split jaw or broken jaw. Very good. Yeah, very good. That's a name for Hanuman. And I'll tell that story on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Hanuman stories are coming after Ramlila. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What else can we say? What are some of the other stories? When Ram killed the soldiers at Panchavati, there was a powerful army of how many thousands of soldiers? Headed by three generals. What were the three generals' names? Testing you all for your Ramayan knowledge. 
14,000 Rakshasras, headed by Dushara, Dushan, Shira, Dushana, and one more, I can't remember. Trishira, Dushana, and Kara, Kara. Yeah. These were the three generals that he eliminated the whole army. One soldier escaped. What was his name? He's the one that told Ravana about what happened. Alambana. Alambana. He got away and he told Ravana about this powerful personality who completely obliterated his army of 14,000 Rakshasters single handedly. <laughs> What was the name of the forest where the monkeys were living? Hmm? Kishkinda. Kishkinda forest. What were the two chief monkeys in the Kishkinda forest? What were their names? Bali and Sugriva. What was Hanuman's relationship to those two? He was serving Sugriva, he was the chief minister under Sugriva, yes. Hmm. What was the name of the brother of uh, Ravana that uh, was given a benediction by Indra? Because of his fighting he received a name because he he had defeated Indra in battle. Indrajit. One who conquers Indra. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what was the name of the brother of Jatayu who could see all the way to Lanka and tell Ram and tell the monkeys actually where Sita was. Chitayu had a brother. He was another eagle. What was his name? Sampati. Sampati. Hmm. The questions are too hard. Okay. <laughs> what was the... Who was that person who who polluted Kaikei, who was her minister. What was her name? She was a hunchback. Mantara, yes, Mantara. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the tribal chief that met, met um, uh, Ram, <clears throat> Sita, and Lakshman in the forest and gave them all facilities and served them nicely? Guha, mm -hmm. he was tribal chief also. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to check out your Ram knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to read the scriptures because the scriptures are there for us to read. If you read and study these things, your mind will be probably happy. Because if we don't engage our mind in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, our minds will go to somewhere else that it's not supposed to be. <laughs> jai si panchatat ki jai. Okay, yes. Uh, Ananta Prabhu. My give. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj, for this inside of Ramayana. <clears throat> uh, in this Prabhupada didn't give a lot of reference material f about Ramayana, which is, what is uh, your recommendation or your um, awareness or where, what was the best reference beside 
maybe Bhagavatam, where is very little information about Ramayana, what you recommend, which resource, which no, is he, like bona fide, because so many versions of that which are not always completely yeah. according to our line or uh, our sampradaya. I can't remember the name, but Prabhupada mentioned there was a four-volume set of the Ramayana that we could read. He said, this is the most authorized version that is available. And it's based on Valmiki's Ramayana, of course. I can't remember, it was four volumes. It starts with a V or a W, I can't remember. Where do you, where do you get your um, insights? I mentioned at the beginning of the class that there's three places that devotees can go to. One is Krishna Dharma's one volume version of the Ramayan. The other one is the series, the series of khandas coming out by Subhavi Las Prabhu. He's put out five khandas and, uh, out of the seven. And then there's the uh, Vidvad Garanga from Mayapur. He's done this on the Ramayan also. Mm -hmm. And Bhakti Vikash Maharaj also, I think. Yeah, he, it's a one volume thing, yeah. just a small book, that's all it is. It has a nice story about Risha Shring in that one. Mm. Like that. And there are some, some written material that's been put out. But the one I read generally is, uh, is uh, Krishna Dharma's. And then when Subhavilas Prabhu put out his, I started to read that. I think he might have put out volume six. I don't know. I'm going to receive some information soon to see if the sixth volume has come out. Because he's such an author, he writes so many other books at the same time. Yeah. Don't waste time. Study these books. Srimad Bhagavatam, Ramayana. You have an ocean. I know maybe it's you're thinking, well, because it's in English, it's so hard. It's nice. Uh, Bhagavat, do you have Bhagavatam in, in Slovenia? Uh, first, we can talk. First, somebody's working on it now, right? Yeah, I remember when I first came, they only had the first canto here. So, yeah, so yeah, Bhagavatam is there in the local language. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Jai Sri Ram. Sri Prabhupad Ki Jai. His Holiness Chandra Maharaj Ki.